Why do we get sick? Stress. stress. It's chronic stress. Not just any stress. It's chronic stress. <laughs> um, stress is a normal reaction of the body. It's physiological. We're supposed to have stress. Stresses are something we cannot live without because if a uh, sable-toothed tiger appears in front of us, we're going to stress reaction that will help us to run and to fight and to save our sore ass. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> but that's a good stress. It's a fight or flight response. You read about it in, in, in the brochure that I gave you. It's a fight or flight response. It's good. It's healthy. It's not good when it's in your body all the time. That's when it's not good. It's supposed to be just for a short time to in extreme situations and situations of extreme danger. Why is that not good? Well, because the, we were talking that our regulation of our functions is happening through the autonomic nervous system the most, of all vital functions, I mean. Autonomic nervous system is divided in two parts, parasympathetic and sympathetic. And all our functions are usually have dual regulations, which means there is stimulation and there is a sedation. There is speeding up and there is slowing down. So there is always these two things, two forces that affect every function that we have in the body. Autonomic nervous system provides just for that. Sympathetic nervous system stimulates, Parasympathetic nervous system mostly sedates. So sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight response, we need to run and fight and, uh, and deal with challenges. Parasympathetic we use when we need to recuperate, slow down and heal. So our healing reactions mostly happen under the control of parasympathetic nervous system. And parasympathetic nervous system is not easy to reach. It's hidden well inside our bodies. Our vagus nerve is the main one that is responsible for parasympathetic regulation. And the usually daytime is when we are under control of sympathetic nervous system and we are in fight or flight because of many challenges of the world. At the night, we're supposed to switch and parasympathetic system supposed to now dominate and heal us. But see, stresses of the day time are so strong sometimes that they would not allow the parasympathetic system to kick in at night. The change in domination does not happen. And we actually more, uh, a lot of us will know it by, well, if you have insomnia, if you have difficulties falling asleep, if uh, all of a sudden you wake up at 3 or 4 o'clock at night, like all of a sudden you're like, oops, that means the switch is not happening. Parasympathetic system is not kicking in. It's trying to, it just can't. Because your fight or flight is so strong that weak parasympathetic cannot kick in. And if it cannot kick in, guess what? Healing reactions are not happening. You don't have time to heal. Your adaptation is not doing what it's supposed to do. It doesn't have time to do that. So, sooner or later, fight or flight will dominate over the rest and digest, which is the parasympathetic response, completely, and suppress the rest and digest response, which means your digestion will go out of whack completely. And we'll, you will end up with stomach ulcers, you will end up with uh, uh, colitis, with uh, Crohn's, and uh, all, all, all that, which is parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for, for good digestion. Plus, you will end up with all sorts of other things, including the high blood pressure and including a hormonal the imbalance, right? Well, you, you know the con con consequences of chronic stress, I don't have to tell you. It's all happening because your parasympathetic system is badly suppressed. It can't kick in. They see a sympathetic fight or flight response, right? That's so you, you just remember what 
fight or flight looks like and what systems actually responsible for the sympathetic dominance of fight or flight. And it's similar to humans or animals. You will have the same things. You will have adrenaline flowing up in the bloodstream and elevating your blood pressure and uh, dilating your pupils and <laughs> basically that's your uh, sympathetic dominance. <coughs> Reasons for sympathetic dominance. <laughs> Sorry, I could not resist. <laughs> Clarence is trying to get what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what am I showing there? I don't believe I saw that. <laughs> Parasympathetic dominance, right? That's with a smile on our face. We're just di resting and digesting and healing and recuperating. That's condition of chronic stress. It's called sympathicotonia. Well, sympathetic nervous system is dominating. Another new term for you. So you have psychosclerosis, right? You have <laughs> pathophobia, and now you have sympathicotonia. Um, so that's what the cycle of chronic stress does to you. Just look at the, at the bottom. This is a formula of chronic stress. Um, increased sympathetic will equal depressed or suppressed parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, the healing is not happening as it should, so it's minus healing, it's minus regeneration, and it's plus aging. So it speeds up your aging process substantially.